welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Brian. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Russell Kane, Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what is going on here? Worst stag do ever. <laughs> <laughs> is it the picture that Angela Merkel's going to send David Cameron for his Christmas card? <laughs> this is just a mark of how confident the German team were, because that is actually before the game. <laughs> Merkel is actually in the starting eleven. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see a picture, though, of German men with one arm in the air that doesn't feel threatening, isn't it? <laughs> there was a lot of that when you watched the celebrations, though. People were like, hey, and you just like, oh, come on, just throw the other one up, please. <laughs> just throw the other one up. Do you reckon Wayne Rooney looked at that picture and thought, why couldn't we have had a prostitute that age? That's why I'm asking. <laughs> People accuse these Germans of arrogance, but this photo is, in fact, it was actually taken at the end of Neymar's hospital bed. I need someone to tell me what it is. We all know what it is. Do you actually need someone to tell you? Yes, I have not seen any of these things. Who are these men and what is this event that they're attending? Please, I have recently landed in this country from foreign shores. And I'm unfamiliar with your tradition. It's the German team in the dressing room having won the World Cup with Chancellor Merkel. Absolutely. Of no. course. Thank you very no. much, Hugh Dad. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, of course. This is a picture of the victorious German football team celebrating their World Cup win in the dressing with Chancellor Angela Merkel. Germany defeated Argentina in the final by a single goal from Mario Goetze in extra time, becoming the first European team ever to win a World Cup in South America. Were you shouting for anyone or not for anyone? Or? Most uh, English people were shouting for Germany, which, uh, which is a first, really, isn't it? Let's face it. But I guess compared to Argentina, you know, people found Germany preferable on the whole because at least they don't keep asking us to give them France back, do they? <laughs> so... I mean, personally, I was, uh, I was at a Six Senses spa having a paraffin wrap, so I didn't catch it. Yeah. <laughs> Zoe, were you watching? I did watch it. It's difficult as an England fan to watch Germany versus Argentina. You're just like, it's like typhoid it... or cholera. Yeah. Which would you prefer? Is it still a thing, though? Is it still I think it is still a thing because uh, I was kind of back in Germany because we hate them less now. Yeah. <laughs> very, I thought it was. I didn't mind you won. I just like it was a good game, but I found it very difficult just watching as an England fan because it, it all goes on so wrong for England. And I bet if you're watching in four years' time on Dave, we're still shit, aren't we? <laughs> 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 I could never support the Argentinians, not after what Maradona did at uh, Wembley 2003. He didn't sing Material Girl. <laughs> yes. The one I love, the guy I love being there was Putin, because he was there because they've got, they're hosting the next one, isn't yes. it? Yes. And every country that hosts it is desperate to win. And he must have been looking at that final thinking, the only way that Russia are going to win is if we invade Germany. <laughs> Putin sitting next to Blatter was the <laughs> finest photograph in the history of democracy. Uh, <laughs> how do you win your elections? Oh, I never run against anyone. Me neither. Ah! <laughs> High five. High five. <laughs> the death of Brazilian football. That's what they uh, witnessed. Oh, Not yeah. Not funny, but mm. that was well, interesting. Well, you say that. It was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> It, there was because I, I a few, few weeks ago I was talking about the, the, the head, you know, the way they're overemphasizing the pretty women in the crowd type shots all the time. Uh, and I said, and I, and I on the show called for more shots of children crying. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and then when they posted there's that one of a small boy just blubbing his eye and he's pushing his glasses out of his face and he's got a Coca-Cola can which is beautiful branding. Absolutely spectacular <laughs> branding. And, uh, and he's weeping into it. And I got sent that image four or five thousand times on Twitter in the minute after it was posted with the words, Happy now! <laughs> yes! Yes, I was. I went through. <laughs> I think uh, Brazil got humiliated, but did you see Joe Hart in that shampoo ad? <laughs> no, obviously not. Headlines about Brazil going, Brazil, uh, England was finally we know shame. And you're going, 
you're aware of what the rest of the world refers to when they say a Brazilian. You are aware <laughs> your name is not always merely associated with beautiful football, but also pubic topiary. Uh, <laughs> Probably the problem, their formation's just too narrow. They yeah. have to play one, 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 one. <laughs> and the goalie was the arsehole. <laughs> You know, uh, in the semi-final, when Neymar was injured, they made him sit on the bench in full kit. Did you see that? Yeah. As a sort of talisman. And you think, that is ridiculous. He's not allowed to play. Who would we do that with? Play, we'd have to do that with Bobby Charlton. That's the only thing we do. <laughs> we should do that, though. We should, just, we should just have Frankie Boyle just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> in a circle suit, just not saying anything. <laughs> Just angrily staring across uh, <laughs> at any use of women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a non-sports fan, as a non-sports fan, are you relieved oh. it's over, though? The main thing that was fascinating for me about British culture is the fact that viewing figures went up when it started to go horribly wrong for Brazil. That says everything about us as a culture, particularly our men, like people like my dad, whose humour. I mean, the last time my dad laughed was when he saw a Jaguar written off on the M11. That's the time he... <laughs> <laughs> state of that. <laughs> People in Britain, it's like, oh, I can't stand football. Brazil are losing. People are sobbing. Switch it on. Classic. <laughs> I wasn't impressed with Mr. Messi, though. It wasn't like the book at all. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Luis Suarez has gone to Barcelona now. 75 million. He apparently had a celebration meal with his mum in Uruguay. Well, I say he had a celebration meal. <laughs> uh, apparently, he lost his balance and the meal hit him in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and on the BBC, it also coincided with Alan Hansen's last game, didn't it? And no nobody asked him the question. I've always wanted to ask him about that scar. And when he was attacked by Lord Voldemort. <laughs> Any old uh, German war criminals gave themselves away watching that match? Because there's a few of them in Argentina, isn't there? If they were watching it in their local pub and they just went, Yes! Oh no, sorry. <laughs> One campaign, by the way, that also slightly back further, Singapore ran an anti gambling campaign about a young kid called Andy, and it was about how Andy's dad had wasted their family's money because he was, he, he, was, he was a gambler, and Singapore wants to stamp out gambling. But it wasn't quite as heart rending as it could have been because of the scripting of the ad. This is the post that they had for it. I hope Germany wins. My dad bet all my savings on that. <laughs> <laughs> so the ad was basically, wow, well, you're going to Disneyland. Hey, little Andy's going to Disneyland. Because <laughs> <laughs> gambling pays off. <laughs> <laughs> in, in other news, how has David Cameron been shaking things up this weekend? He's uh, shuffled around the cabinet. He's got, it's like the Tour de France. He's got rid of lots of the big names, hasn't he? They've all fallen over. But the one person, <laughs> the one person who's still in the same job is Eric Pickles, which, according to the thing I read, is because he's very difficult to move. <laughs> They were thinking of giving him a sideways move, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but then they decided it was easier to leave him where he was and move everybody else around him. <laughs> so, yes, he wants to update his uh, a cabinet described as male, pale and stale. Uh, which does sound a bit... It should be done like that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this cabinet is male, pale and stale. <laughs> pale. Uh, I just want to know what Nick Clegg does on a day when they reshuffle the cabinet. If he just sits at home in his own cabinet going, oh, I'll... I'll put the rice near the spaghetti. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> well, in, in theory, it's supposed to show that he's, you know, he's being very pro-women. You know, it's, it's very positive for women that he's, he's added more women to the cabinet. But one of the women he added was a woman called uh, Nikki Morgan, who previously was the Minister for Women, and now she's Education Secretary, but still Minister for Women. So that's how important the job of Minister for Women is. <laughs> you can still do that, and this other full-time job. I just find it creepy when a load of old Tories go, we need more women in the cabinet, and you can just see all the women shuffling past. Can you get through there, you skinny thing? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Ken, Ken Clark's gone as well, hasn't Ken he? Ken Clark has gone, Do you reckon yeah. he'll resign in jazz? Because he's really into it. I'm leaving. Does <laughs> 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 Ken Clark do all just he scat everything he yeah. does? Yeah. Yeah. That's why he had to leave. Yeah. Inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the point, Ken. Get to the point. Stop soloing. Stop <laughs> riffing on this. Ken! Apparently the cabinet now is more Eurosceptic. 
Uh, but imagine uh, thinking that Europe doesn't actually exist. <laughs> I mean, I had a near Europe experience once <laughs> when I was on holiday in Kent. <laughs> I found myself walking along a tunnel towards the light. <laughs> In the end, someone said, Bonjour. That's so unfair, I thought I led a good life. <laughs> You're never quite sure which week Milton is actually mocking, are you? The party going to Russell, Zoe and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Ich bin ein Berwinner. <laughs> this game involves Zoe and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round's the stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first topic is drinking. Who wants to come in on that? Zoe. I like a drink. I uh, realised I was probably drinking a bit too much recently when I turned to a friend not so long ago and, oh, that is a very nice breakfast wine. <laughs> I like a bit of rosé. Who doesn't like a bit of rosé or princess petrol, as I like to call it? <laughs> Favourite wine, obviously, the box of wine. I enjoy a box of wine. People are, people are snobby about boxes of wine in this country. I'm like, oh, wine you can stack. It's brilliant. <laughs> I love a box of wine, because glass is so revealing, isn't it? It's, it's transparent, it tells a tale, doesn't it? You can see how much you've had of a bottle of wine. But you can't see through my cardboard box of wine, can you? <laughs> you have no idea how much of this five-litre box of wine <laughs> I have slowly but steadily been sipping my way through during the course of this shitty, shitty party. <laughs> I just stick a big straw in the top and pretend it's a massive Ribena. <laughs> and it, it keeps giving, doesn't it? It keeps giving. You think it should be finished by now. You get to the end, you do all the classic things, you tip it on its side, you depress the little stopper. That's where an amateur will stop. They will discard the box of wine. But a connoisseur like myself, we know there's more. <laughs> Isn't it? You, you rip open the cardboard head. You pull out the silvery intestines and you play what I like to refer to as the alcoholic bagpipe in your own glass. So that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is communication. <laughs> Is it just me, or are the instructions to electrical goods these days far too complicated? I mean, I just don't know that many languages. <laughs> Words are powerful things. Sometimes a single letter H can attract helicopters. <laughs> Has to be a big one. Hours I spent watching that hot tap. <laughs> Similes, what are they like? <laughs> <laughs> of course, years ago in Wales, the letter T went on strike and they had the great T strike of 1922, or as they had to call it, the great E Reich of 1920U. <laughs> Everyone had to get to work by RAM. <laughs> In the end, the strike was broken and the T's had to get together with random groups of consonants and that is how the Welsh language was formed. <laughs> Nuisance phone calls. Oh, they put the bills up. <laughs> I can't even count to ten in French, and uh, to our quatre cinq, he said, ah! <laughs> Sorry, I've got a wheat allergy. <laughs> well done. I think that round 
points for Zoe. So I'll do that down again. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Russell, which category would you like? Technology, please. Okay, technology. The answer is four years. What is the question? Is that the amount of time it would take that Magaluf girl to orally pleasure every man on the planet? <laughs> is it how long till Germany win the World Cup again? <laughs> <laughs> is it for how long have I been writing a sitcom now? <laughs> How's that going to go? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be my ticket off this show. <laughs> One Direction are rumoured to be splitting up. What is the average age of people who give a shit? <laughs> Is it the average response time of the snail ambulance? <laughs> Is it if Scotland become independent, what are they planning on reducing the legal drinking age to? <laughs> if you add it all up, how much of your life do you spend standing in a room going, what did I come in here for? <laughs> Is it, Dara, is it? How long have I wanted to tell you that I love you? <laughs> <laughs> is it the actual number of years Mick Hucknall could hold back before he looked like a clown dipped in acid? <laughs> How long does it take the average person in Rotherham to eat five fruit and veg? <laughs> Potato is a veg. Uh, <laughs> the correct answer is... When are they going to try and build a spaceport in the UK? It is absolutely right. Thank you very much, Andy Parham. You're very well. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was, how long will it be before the UK gets its very own spaceport? This is the news that Britain is to build a commercial spaceport which should be operational in 2018. It is almost ludicrously close, because by that means that you'll be able to actually take off and look down and see HS2 not being built. <laughs> are you excited? How exciting is this? Oh, it's very exciting. I mean, Virgin Galactic, they're going to take off at the end of this year, apparently, in New Mexico. And Richard Branton says he's going to be on the first flight. Now, given his success with his ballooning, that is a very brave move, isn't it? <laughs> It's ludicrous to call it Virgin Galactic, is what it's called, isn't it? But you know how they only go 62 miles up, that's yes. it, don't they? They get to the outer edges of the atmosphere. And that isn't actually that exciting, is it? That's like saying, at the beginning of Star Wars, a long time ago, in a galaxy as far away as London is from Portsmouth. <laughs> it's hard to put it in Scotland, but one of the places, they were talking about putting it on an island, the Hebrides, Benbecula or somewhere like that. And they come back going, oh, it's unlikely, though, because people won't want to go that far to go into space. <laughs> you can't be arse dragging yourself to the Hebrides. Perhaps space isn't for you. I wouldn't want to go on a Sunday because that, <laughs> let's face it, that is a bloody long bus replacement service. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, uh, is, isn't British space control, like air traffic control, isn't it going to be in Swindon? Isn't that where it is? I, I, I have no idea of a British space control. Yeah, it goes, no. well, Swindon, we have a problem. <laughs> oh, all right, my lover. Uh, <laughs> Surely it'll be Swindon, we have a problem. Well, we're in Swindon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know how it works. So do you literally just go up and down? Do you go round a bit? You go up and down. You just just you do. literally up and You're down. You're already spinning. Not even across a bit. Wow, we really are so <laughs> down on this. I'm genuinely surprised at the lack of one. No, thank shit. Uh, <laughs> If there was somebody up there pretending to be an alien attacking the craft or something like that, that would be that would make it more worth it. So they should position like somebody up there. Air <laughs> a high level hot air balloon that throws just sprays it with silly string even. To look like alien tentacles. So you go to sixty miles the where you see the curvature of the earth and the stars above, but you don't think that's sufficiently impressive. <laughs> you expect six aliens. minutes of weightlessness where somebody goes, Oh no, now we're under attack. Wah, wah. <laughs> Call me a dreamer. <laughs> the yeah. lamest bunch of people yeah. in the world. Bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Okay, different topic. What NHS operations might more people be eligible for? You're going to be able to get gastric bypasses uh, on the NHS. Uh, more fat people will be eligible for them, apparently. 
you're wondering whether they really need a gastric bypass or whether they need a Greg's bypass <laughs> just to avoid the shop in the first place. By the way, just to be, you know, we don't say fat people, the term is, is jolly or... <laughs> Or, 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 for those who are extremely case, morbidly jolly. Uh. <laughs> Apparently there's so many fat people now, right, is that people don't feel that they're fat because they're surrounded by lots or of other fat, fat people. people. Yeah. So the secret is if you do want to lose some weight, right, is not actually to lose any weight if you're feeling fat, just hang around other fat people, you'll feel much better about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. Sometimes when, when, when I feel I'm too funny, I come on this show. <laughs> That, was, that, was, that sounded like I was flagging you off. It, 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 did, it yeah. did sound that way, and they rather enjoyed it. Yes. <laughs> no, the, one, the one I hate is when people say, all I've got to do is look at a cake and I put on weight. That's the worst line. I actually tested it. I kidnapped someone, I locked them in the room, and I just showed cake at the window. Two weeks later, dead and thin. What a line. Yeah. <laughs> talk about the obesity time bomb, don't they? The, the obesity time bomb, you just think, God, I really hope I'm not in the area when that goes off. <laughs> <laughs> These days, people eat too much and they don't go out. Yes, the obese agoraphobic is very much the elephant in the room. <laughs> It produced a league table of the obese nations, the yeah. obesity league table. America was on top of the table. I think we were third. You think an obesity league table, surely that was crying out for a pie chart. <laughs> a very amusing joke, but mathematically incorrect. Okay. <laughs> the end of that round, the boys going to end you and Milton. Yeah. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear in court. <laughs> we, the jury, have yet to reach a final verdict, but we would like to have a guess. Is it Mrs. Peacock with a candlestick in the library? <laughs> The defendant is, as you can see, an evil man with a black heart, but nice, firm buttocks. <laughs> the Guildford Four and the Birmingham Six were miscarriages of justice, but S Club Seven must remain in prison. <laughs> guilty of anything, it's caring too much. And embezzlement. <laughs> embezzlement? <laughs> embezzlement and caring too much. That's, that's all I'm giving you all. <laughs> it appears that we have a hung jury. Thank you, gentlemen. You can put your trousers back on now. <laughs> OK, Mr Pistorius, there will now be a toilet break. Don't anybody else go in there! <laughs> Before I pass down this sentence of death, how about a selfie? Oh my god, your death face is so random. <laughs> you are accused of stealing top of the range toilet rolls. How do you plead? Quilty or not quilty? <laughs> No, Mr. Coulson, we're not going to tell you your sentence. Instead, we've left a message for you on Hugh Grant's voicemail. I am now going to pronounce sentence. Sentence. <laughs> Mr. Clapton, I put it to you that it is highly unlikely that you did not shoot the deputy given that you've already admitted that you did shoot the sheriff. <laughs> OK. Uh, rock a -bye baby on the treetop. Oh, alibi. <laughs> well, it's been a long and complex trial, so before sentencing, let's have a look at some of your best bits. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mr. Pistorius, the court rejects your defense that at the time of the crime, you were legless. <laughs> and now, Mr. Harris, it is time for your sentence. Can you tell what it is yet? You are accused of unnecessarily advertising a make-up smoothie. How do you plead? Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a nature documentary. Watch out for crooks, because anybody wearing crooks is a bellend. <laughs> What's incredible about the Emperor Penguin is its ability to make you look like a shit father. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most fantastic migration I have ever seen. These Romanians are moving in next door to Nigel Farage. <laughs> if you're in the jungle for a few months, use a leaf and some river moss from a bank. It really does feel like a lady. pliers and an awful lot of gaffer tape, but I finally got this flamingo's legs on the right way around. <laughs> I have spent my whole life living with hyenas. It hasn't been easy, but there have been a lot of laughs as well. <laughs> The barbs that come off these tiny creatures can be very painful. This one just called me a talentless wanker. <laughs> <laughs> the pack of meerkats surrounded the helpless lizard, and within seconds he'd been forced to change his car insurance supply. <laughs> <laughs> the comics or jesterlings all jostle for position, eager to present their humour to the large alpha male. Eh. <laughs> A badger in its natural environment, on the hard shoulder being pecked at by crows. <laughs> this uh, lioness has just had four cubs, but it's not as sweet as it looks. She's also had three brownies, two guides, and a venture scout. And this little fella, this little bird, his head can literally turn 300 and... <laughs> That's owls, isn't it? <laughs> and now the male attempts, you know what, by putting his thingamajig <laughs> in the female's whatchamacallit. <laughs> and here I am in the shrubbery outside the BBC Centre, and I think I've sp I have I've spotted one. This is extremely rare. It is it's a female panelist. <laughs> Just one bite from this snake can paralyse the nervous system in three seconds. You'll have to excuse the trembling excitement in my voice as I'm currently being noshed off by Bill Oddie. <laughs> <laughs> OK, again, that round of applause to Russell, Dolly and Andy! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Russell Kane. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night. Jack D, Ben Miller, Miles Jarp and Ashling B are trying not to make the audience laugh in half an hour in David Bedil's new show on Radio 4. Want to hear on BBC 2 next? It's Newsnight.